this is another old project that's been back burnered for a long time. I'd kind of like to get it done. It's kind of an annoyance. This is my tractor project back goes back a couple years right when I separated uh, Hill's workbench out of Hill or Stream. And um, so I don't know where these previous videos are. They're probably on both channels or one or the other. <laughs> I'll have to uh, put them in the description eventually. You know, links to the videos that, that give the backstory to this case. Basically, I got way too much voltage in my lawn tractor. And I burnt out my expensive LED headlights. Um, I think more than once. It's been years now. Remarkably, the one the LEDs in my shoot light. I got this video about LED shoot lights on my uh, snowblower shoot. Uh, remarkably, those things took all the high voltage and everything else that's been going on. But yeah, I've got high voltage up up to 21 volts or so. You know, and this has got the regulator. I bought a new regulator. I bought a couple new regulators. <laughs> uh, and I determined, you know, no matter what I do, well, one thing that was making it worse, there's two things that it turns out makes it worse. If your battery is weak, has a high uh, equivalent series resistance, ESR, it's, you know, getting old and weak, um, that aggravates the problem, it seems like. You need a good solid battery to pull this regulator. It's weird. Cause you'd think it would regulate against a ground, you know, an absolute voltage against the ground, but it doesn't appear to do that. And the fact that I was, instead of having a fuse, I was using a light bulb in a fuse socket uh, on that lawn tractor. It's an ATC type fuse, but I have a little light bulb in a fuse. That's another video. Uh, that... I was using for troubleshooting and that was actually aggravating my high voltage situation. I had 21 volts with that light bulb in there even though I had a newish battery. And uh, when I took the light bulb out, the voltage went down. Still a little bit high, but nowhere near as high as it was. You know, like the 14-ish, 15-ish, which is not really where I want it. And uh, then I noticed, even though I've got conventional bulbs in the headlights and I've kind of gone to running the headlights just to keep voltage in check in that thing. And I need to put a voltmeter on the front pa on the panel of that tractor. But I've been, you know, crying out for a better voltage regulator. Here's one of the old ones. That's in the tractor. See, I've been playing around with the contacts in this thing. Get out of my own light. That's off the screen. So that's kind of what the old regulator looks like. And it's actually a half wave regulator instead of a full wave regulator. I was going to do a bridge rectifier. I had these, uh, see, I got these terminals on here already. And I was going to do a bridge rectifier. I screwed up one of the heat shrinks. And I was going to do everything heavy duty, you know, potentially that it could handle 15 amps. So that's what this whole system is rated for, 15 amps. And you know, if I did do a PTO, if I did a, like a, say, put a winch on the, on the tractor, and I probably wouldn't run it through this anyway. I'd probably bypass this regulator if I could, and just run off the raw stuff coming out of this regulator. So originally, I was going to run this instead of this regulator, and then into this regulator, but. My problem was I just get way too much voltage. If I had 48 volts coming out of my raw AC into a full wave bridge would give me, you know, 1.4 times more than that. It's just way too much voltage to uh, try to cut down to 12 volts. So I said, well, why don't I just use the stock, you know, I got two or three of these that work. Well, I don't. The one I actually did is something wrong with it. So I've only got ends and there's pieces of it on this. But anyway, I've got a couple that work and do the same thing. So at least accept that, you know, I've got up to 21 volts coming out of here and then start, use that as a starting point rather than starting at, you know, 50, 60 volts as a starting point, whatever it would have been. That way, I don't have to worry about using one of these guys. A real common LM, this is an LM uh, something, what, 7815 or whatever they are. 
and that's going to go right there in the circuit 15 volt regulator always uh, raw voltage in ground and then the fixed voltage out the 17 is different the uh, you know the adjustable one but for the fixed at least that's the case and let's use this heat sink this transistor is a 200 watt transistor 20 amp maximum IC so it should be able to handle 15 as an absolute max like I said I'm never going to use that much all it's going to really run is headlights and maybe a audio system eventually I'd like to have a little audio system on this tractor for not so much when I'm cutting the lawn but for when I'm in the woods uh, cutting wood and using the tractor to haul wood you know so kind of a centric idea but I'd like to have a good source of reliable voltage I'm trying to shoot for 13.8 volts basically and I should have done this at home here I don't have a computer here I gotta I'm away from my computer well away from my internet connection I should say I do have a laptop here at any rate this is what I came up with I kinda played around a couple times if you use a two transistor circuit you can go the other way with the transistor you could use the PNP and you know use the collector as your input on the power and anyway use a two transistor circuit but doing it this way uh, I could do it with one transistor I should be able to anyway of course I haven't tested this I could be uh, now let me give you the theory of the circuit anyway so let's say I cut the circuit right here I would still be drawing my 13.8 out of here because my 15 volt regulator is still working and putting out its you know up to one amp current going through a one amp diode type deal here and this is pulling through the base here I could pull one amp at 13.8 volts out of this with my collector open and you put the collector on and of course you get the rest of the current available for you but if the voltage goes above 13.8 say it goes up to 14 then the circuit should shut down because there's no way you get too close to this uh, 14.4 volts that you got at this point and then you drop another 0.6 here so if I get above that 14 point you know 6 is nothing is going to flow I, you know it's just start, start shutting off above 13.8 it shuts off pretty rapidly until you got pretty much nothing at 14.4 this um, in, intermediate point here so that's my plan and I'm going to try it out and uh we'll see if it works these calculations here were just me scribbling around I was trying to figure out for a quarter watt resistor what was the lowest resistance I could use at what voltage I had here which ended up being the 14.4 so I figured 829 ohms would uh, be the max it would give me a quarter watt and I could push this because there's an actual fixed resistor uh, 820 ohm it's a common value so I'll be pushing it a little bit but this won't always see the max voltage either so I'll probably go for that I kind of want to maximize the current coming out of this beast this is a one amp device that's going to be kind of coasting with the transistor doing its work I want to get a little bit of current through here just to keep it stable give me a good reference for the base here And here it is, completed. The transistor will be hot. 
and the heatsink is isolated from the transistor. Heatsink is not isolated from the regulator since the middle terminal and the tab are both ground. Um, probably an L bracket to metal for the mounting and also a supplemental ground. And then just an in and out for the uh, 21 in and the 13.8 out. Will it work? So just entertaining some next day thoughts. I'm going to just do some basic ohmmeter checks. And then I think I'm just going to plug it in to real life and see if it works in real life. Daring and foolish as that sounds. Uh, I'm tempted to put a cap on the input. I'm debating that. There's pros and cons to that. Because this is the rough coming off of the, uh, well, coming off of one of these regulators. So it actually shouldn't be all that rough. Well, there's no capacitor upstream. Battery, of course. Well, the battery's going to be downstream, though. So basically, I'm just going to plug this in to the uh, regulator that's on the unit, on the car, on the car, on the tractor. Plug it into the uh, B plus out. And then I got a spade on this end where I'll just take the wire that normally went there and plug that right into here. So let's just be plug and go. And then I just got to find a place to house this under the hood where it's not going to see any weather, of course. If it all works, I should probably, uh, and I'm settled on the circuit, I should probably spray this with some kind of conformal coating on all sides, even paint. Well, not the heat sink, though. It'd be nice to get some coating on these uh, bears. Maybe I'll just use tape and uh, I might just paint this red or something. <laughs> I'm going to put it in a place where you're not going to get to it easy anyway. It shouldn't be a foul. It'll be hot when the engine's running, but also give me an easy test point. So one of the downfalls of this circuit I predict will be that I'm not going to get any charge during idle. Because I'm going to need almost 18 volts here for the circuit to even really work, really give me a good charging voltage out. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully it, something goes to this regulator before it hits its... It needs 3 volts over the uh, 15 before it can really do an honest 15. But hopefully even at 15 it's putting out something. So I'll be getting something, but... 13.8 is a good charge current, you know, a good all-purpose charge current. Probably not a good trickle current for storage, you know, but... For something that's in use. And when I'm snow blowing or when I'm mowing, uh, the throttle is all the way up. Now, sometimes when I'm logging, I run around with the throttle, like, you know, down pretty low. I'm just pulling the wagon. So the other thing I'm going to have to do, if I do the circuit especially, is uh, get a volt meter on my front panel. So I can tell when I've got my 13.8 and when I don't, you know. Because if I'm idling this, letting it sit at idle, it's probably just going to be running off the battery. It's probably not going to be uh, getting much charge out of this. At idle. That's the only thing I'm probably losing is charging at idle compared to the uh, not using the circuit. I should get longer battery life in one way even though I'm getting less charge time because I'm never over volting the battery and drying it out. You know, 13 is pushing it a little bit, but not too much. And I should have been thinking about how this is going to plug in. Now that I think about it, it's going to plug right in. I'm going to have to bend the regulator like this one's bent. Not all the way up, but just so it's out of the uh, connector. Because this is a connector with three ports on it. And then I'm going to have to get this into that one of the ports. Well, that'll work. On that three port connector. But what I should have done is made this emitter wire longer. Or at least made these two wires equal distant. I don't know what I was thinking. When I made this, I wasn't visualizing this clearly enough. I was thinking this was a separate wire. Now that I remember that it's part of this three-port harness, it kind of changes things. I should have made this emitter wire longer. At least I should have made these wires equal length. Um, 
but it's not a big deal. I'll see how it goes and where it's going to go. I'll leave it as it is for right now. But before I actually install it, I'll probably have to uh, put a longer emitter wire on here. And uh, also I'm going to mount an L bracket to one of these holes or some kind of bracket. Let's see what I can do. Figure out where it's going to go and what I can do and how long these wires need to be. The emitter wire might be way longer if I have to stick it off in the distance somewhere. I have to go all the way back to this point. So yeah, I'm going to have to pull this three pin connector out, bend this prong up like that regulator I showed earlier, stuff this into that, stuff this into the other one. This is going to have to be longer. I've got nowhere to mount it here. Although I guess even mounted right to this plastic, it'd still be under the cover. Yeah, well it's under the cover. Well protected under the cover. So I could even really mount it right here if I wanted to. Or I could extend the emitter wire. And uh, see this is going to plug into this. So let's say it's stuck like that. I could actually stick it under the dash if I really wanted to protect it. Right to the side of the dash. That might be a better way to go because that way I'll have some additional metal to this the heat sink too. And a good ground to boot. That might be what happens here. Stick it right under the right like that. Be fine. Or down here even. Actually that's probably more practical. Then I don't even have to lengthen things possibly. Let's see. This metal right here. It's good thick metal. Yeah, I could actually mount it right here somehow. Darn, that wire is just a little longer. I think I'm going to need to make the wire longer though. I guess I could mount it right here. Why not? And uh, then it would reach. Barely. Yeah, that's the ticket. A good place for it too. Be well covered even in the rain. The snow. Snow might get to it a little bit actually. A real blowy snow and it's going to be hot. So maybe some kind of conformal coating. Well that's more time than I was going to spend on this project this week. So I'm not going to finish the install, time up, up here again and do some more testing and hopefully install some kind of voltmeter at the same time. I've got a couple options on that. One I've got to find a housing for, a real cheap unit. Another one i got to make a big hole for if I use it.